Addiction affects one in three American families. That's a shocker. Tonight, Dr. Oz hosting a national night of conversation about drug and alcohol abuse. He is kind enough to uh, join us and talk about that. Drug, this was a shocking fact. Drug overdose kills more people in this country than car accidents. It's the number one cause of accidental death in the nation of people under age 50. It's ravaging our communities where one in three families are touched by it. I was in Washington uh, this past month with this large concert to try to put a face to, to the many people in recovery, because that's the good news. You, there is a realness to recovery. Uh, and the war on drugs is now being shifted to a war for recovery. And tonight's conversation, we hope, will catalyze that. It's not just me, by the way. It's everybody from state governments, uh, the, the major federal organizations, big pasture groups have gotten involved. So we've got the religious community engaged. Of course, celebrities and medical societies are part of it. We want the anti-drug. The anti-drug is the parent right. to get involved in this battle. We want them to sit their kids aside because, you know, remember, kids are, as we were, completely influenced by our parents, even though we deny it, and ask a couple key questions. How are you coping? How are your friends coping? Are any of you guys using anything, out, you know, any chemicals to get through life? And when you have that conversation, you change how they think about the process because most addiction starts in the teen years. I see this TV commercial, and I, see, I know you see the same one. Uh, and it's from a very expensive uh, clinic that says, I used to be an addict, but now I'm cured. Is there a cure for addiction or is there just treatment for the rest of your life? Well, the word cure is a difficult word to use with addiction because most people relapse at some point, but they get better again after that. The real issue is to celebrate people when in they're in that recovery period. Most of us know addicts when they're at their worst which is why it's so difficult to deal with them, especially if it's in your family. The reality is, though, that they, they do get better, and they go through many, many years of complete sobriety or recovery from addiction, and then sometimes they'll trip. But you know what? If you're on a diet and you fail the diet, uh, you're not thrown out. You re-engage re as soon as you make a U-turn and get back on track again. And that's the best metaphor. If you drive it in your car and you miss the turn, the GPS doesn't berate you. It welcomes you to make a U-turn when you're allowed to, and that's what you have to do in life. Is there something, as a physician, is there something in the brain, is there such a thing as an addictive personality? We've heard that before. And I, I, I said that one time to an addiction counselor, and she bristled at me and said, there is no such thing as an addictive personality. Do you agree as a physician or disagree? As a physician, I think there's pretty good evidence that there's a genetic component to addiction that makes it much easier for some to falter and uh, succumb to addiction and more, and more readily resist it for others. So it's not a, a moral failing that you're an addict. A typical addict today is a 35-year-old, hardworking construction guy who hurts his back, gets put on two weeks of Vicodin because people like me, doctors, are taught to make sure people aren't in pain so we sometimes aren't scared of the potential repercussions. And you know, some people get narcotics and they feel a thrill. A, a psychedelic life starts to happen, uh, even if they've never tried them before. Others feel sleepy. And so obviously, genetically, you're gonna go one way or the other depending on how you feel. But remember this, Tim, we're consuming in America over 75%, three quarters of the world supply of narcotics. Wow. We're 5% of the population. So we've completely lost touch with the dangers uh, of this. And a lot of this comes back to patients. And I've got a big show talking about, you know, focusing on this all, all season long because we've got people like a Surgeon General coming on and reemphasizing that chronic pain often isn't well managed with narcotics. And if you're taking pain pills for something like a toothache, maybe you should think twice about right. Is the pain really that bad? Absolutely. And, and we have a link to, uh, to the show, to the national conversation, as well as a parent's guide to really help them, uh, help moms and dads understand how to begin that conversation. Dr. Oz, always delightful to see you. Thank you so much. And, and don't forget the Dr. Oz Show weekdays on Fox 4 at 2 p.m. Thanks so much.